أعزائي طلبة المرحلة الثانية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our lecture today is about the inguinal canal The inguinal canal This is an oblique passage through the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall It extends from the deep inguinal ring downward and medially to the superficial inguinal ring so it can be regarded as an intermuscular cleft that pass from the deep inguinal ring downward and medially in between the muscle to the superficial inguinal ring in male it allows the structure to pass to and from the abdomen to the testis while in female, it, it allows the round ligament of the uterus to pass from the uterus to the labium majus. This drawing shows that uh, the in male, this is the spermatic cord passing through the inguinal canal to the testis. And this is the round ligament passing through the inguinal canal in female to the labia majora. This is the spermatic cord. In male, the inguinal canal is more well developed and it is longer than that of the female. It allows the passage of the structures that pass through the spermatic cord to the testis, from the abdomen to the testis. And in female, it allows the passage of the round ligament of the uterus. This is the uterus and this is the round ligament passing through the inguinal canal to the labia majora in female. In inguinal canal rings, these rings are regarded as weak points. The deep inguinal ring is an oval opening in the fascia transversalis. It lies above the inguinal ligament, midway between the anterior superior leg spine and the symphysis pubis. That's what we call the mid-inguinal point. The superficial inguinal ring is a triangular shaped defect in the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. It lies, its position lies immediately above and medial to the pubic tubercle. This is a schematic drawing of the inguinal canal, and this is the deep ring and this is the inguinal canal lies parallel and uh, parallel to the inguinal ligament. This is the inguinal ligament in green color extending in between the anterior superior spine and the pubic tubercle. This is the inguinal canal. This is the deep ring, which is an oval shape opening in the fascia transversalis. Lies midway in between the anterior superior spine and the symphysis pubis. Uh, this is the superficial inguinal ring, superficial inguinal ring, which is a triangular shape defect in the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. It lies immediately above and medial to the pubic tubercle, above and medial to the pubic tubercle. We can see here that the inferior epigastric artery, which is one of the arteries that supply the anterior abdominal wall, originating from the external iliac artery, lies medial to the deep inguinal ring. This is the superficial inguinal ring, which is regarded as a weak area, weak point, since it is a defect in the aponeurosis of the uh, external oblique muscle. Here we can see the, e the exit of the spermatic cord, exit of the spermatic cord through the superficial inguinal ring. Here, the edge of the superficial inguinal ring will give a fiber that will continue to cover the spermatic cord. This is the deep inguinal ring, which lies midway in between the anterior superior spine and the symphysis pubis, that is the mid inguinal point. Uh, and it lies, the inferior epigastric artery lies medial to this deep inguinal ring.
what are the boundaries of the inguinal canal? The inguinal canal boundaries are as follow. Anterior, it have anterior wall, roof or superior wall, floor or inferior wall, and it have posterior wall. Anterior wall. External oblique, it is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis. This is the external oblique muscle and this is its aponeurosis. It will form the anterior wall of the inguinal canal. This anterior wall is, if we remove the external oblique, it is reinforced by the origin by, of the internal oblique. By the origin of the internal oblique. So the anterior, anterior wall formed by the external oblique aponeurosis and it is reinforced laterally by the origin of the internal oblique. Posterior wall is formed by fascia transversalis. Mainly it is formed by fascia transversalis laterally. And it is reinforced medially, the posterior wall reinforced medially by the conjoint tendon. Conjoint tendon, this tendon is, it is the tendon of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle forming the conjoint tendon. It's form part of the posterior wall medially. The roof and the floor. The roof of this inguinal canal is formed by the arching lowest fibers. Arching lowest fibers of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. Arching of the over the spermatic cord. The floor or the inferior wall is formed by the inguinal ligament, inguinal ligament in addition to the lacunar ligament near its medial end. This is the floor of the inguinal canal that is formed by the inguinal ligament. This is the inguinal ligament is formed by the folded lower border of the external oblique aponeurosis extending in between the anterior superior spine and the pubic tubercle. Near the medial end of the inguinal ligament, we have this is the lacunar ligament that extends medially and upward, medially, uh, medially and backward, medially and backward. An important triangle here near the inguinal region is called the inguinal or Hasselbach triangle. This is formed by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle and the inguinal ligament and the inferior epigastric vessels. Inferior epigastric vessels. This uh, triangle is important in, in the clinical application because it is related to the formation of the hernia, inguinal hernia. What is the inguinal canal? Facilitate the passage for is the, is the passage of spermatic cord in male. The spermatic cord will pass through the inguinal canal. It is a collection of structure that pass through the inguinal canal to and from the testes. Spermatic cord, so it is a collection of structures. It begins at the deep inguinal ring and it is lateral lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. It is lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. It ends, this is, this, this is the spermatic cord, begin at the deep inguinal ring and ends at the testis. What are the coverings of the spermatic cord or what is called spermatic fasciae? It is derived from the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. The outer layer is the external spermatic fascia. External spermatic fascia derived from the external oblique aponeurosis. Cremasteric fascia is derived from the internal oblique muscle. And the internal spermatic fascia is derived from the fascia transversalis. In this drawing, we can see this is the spermatic cord and it has these three layers. The outer one is derived from the, from the external oblique aponeurosis. And we can see it is a, it continuous with the superficial inguinal ring. 
it is called external spermatic fascia. The next layer is the cremasteric fascia derived from the internal oblique, and the the deepest layer or the innermost layer is called internal spermatic fascia that is derived from transversalis fascia. So this is the spermatic cord B and at the testes. These are the layers the external spermatic fascia, cremasteric fascia or muscle and the internal spermatic fascia. We can see here that the cremasteric fascia also contains some of the muscle fiber that is called cremasteric muscle and with its nerve which is called genital nerve. This is this nerve, leo genital nerve is called genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve supplying this muscle, cremasteric muscle. Cremasteric muscle. This muscle is important to because with its contraction it will drag the scrotum upward. It will bring the testis toward the more nearer to the body. What are the structures of the spermatic cord? What are the structures that is passing through the spermatic cord? First of all the vas or ductus deferens, testicular artery that arises from the abdominal artery at the level of L2, testicular veins, which is the pampiniform plexus, testicular lymph vessels that bring lymph or drain lymph from the testis and the epididymis up to the abdomen, to the paraortic lymph node, or autonomic nerves, remains of the processus vaginalis on the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve that supply the cremasteric muscle. These are the structure we can see here. This is the testicular artery. This is in the blue color is the pampiniform plexus and other structures. These are the covering layers. The outer one is the external spermatic fascia, cremasteric fascia, internal spermatic fascia. And these are the structures, which is the vas deferens, testicular artery, Pampiniform plexus, lymphatics, and nerves. First of all, the first structure is the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. This is a this is a muscular tube. It is a cord-like muscular tube that extends from the tail of the epididymis. Extend from the tail of epididymis, and it ascends up with the through the spermatic cord to enter through the inguinal canal with the structure of the spermatic cord through the deep inguinal ring and to pass to the pelvis. It is a cord, this is the vas deferens or ductus deferens. It is a cord-like structure, thick walled muscular tube because it's and its function is to facilitate the passage of sperm through the through its lumen to the urethra. So it have a thick walled muscular duct that's and it is important for its function during contraction for the passage of the sperm and the, its function as we say transport spermatozoa from the epididymis this is the epididymis to the urethra pampiniform plexus we can see here that we have one testicular artery but there is at this region we don't have testicular vein we have a plexus of veins plexus we have an extensive venous plexus called pampiniform plexus surrounding the artery it leaves the posterior border of the testis as the plexus ascend up it will become reduced in size and at above the level of the deep inguinal ring single testicular vein is formed vein واحد at the deep at the level of the deep inguinal ring these are the two testicular vein but plexus at the deep ring it will become just as it will ascend up as a single vein but here the drainage will be different runs up on the posterior abdominal wall drain into the left 
renal vein this is on the left side نحن نقول على left side نشوف left testicular vein will drain into the left renal vein while on the right side drain into the inferior vena cava directly this is important clinically here when the left testicular vein drain into the left renal vein that if there is a problem in the right if there is a problem in the left kidney such as like a tumor this tumor it might press or form a compression on the left testicular vein and it will lead to varicosity varicosity in the left testis not like that of the right testis which drain its vein drain directly on the inferior vena cava testicular artery testicular artery or gonadal artery is a branch of the abdominal aorta at the level of L2 it is long and cylinder artery descend on the posterior abdominal wall in a retroperitoneal route and it traverses traverse the inguinal canal with the structure of the spermatic cord and supply the testis and the epididymis قاعد نشوف هنا في المقارنة between the testicular artery and testicular vein we have these are the two testicular arteries at the level of L2 descend these are long and cylinder uh, descend in uh, retroperitoneal route retroperitoneal route until it descend through the inguinal canal to supply the testis and the epididymis while the testicular vein here, the right one is will, will drain into the inferior vena cava, while the left testicular vein will drain into the left renal vein. What is the lymphatic drainage that, or the lymphatics that pass through the spermatic cord is the lymphatics that that drain the testis and epididymis the, the lymphatics that drain from the testis and epididymis it will drain up through the inguinal canal through the spermatic cord inguinal canal to the inside of the abdomen to nodes that's called lumbar lymph nodes these lumbar lymph nodes or another name is the para aortic para aortic lymph nodes that are the level of lumbar vertebra because the origin of the testis embryologically is is from the lumbar region is from the lumbar region and normally during development it, it will descend down until its final destination in the scrotum so the lymph from the testis it will drain to the inside of the abdomen to the lumbar lymph nodes while that of the scrotum to the superficial inguinal lymph node what is the nerve supply or what are the nerves that pass through the spermatic cord is called the nerve fiber from the aortic plexus which is autonomic nerve that supply that supply the testis another structures another structures that pass through the spermatic cord is the remains of the processus vaginalis Embryologically, during development, as the as the testes descend from the posterior abdominal wall from the lumbar region and descend down to the pelvis, it, it will drag with it a layer of peritoneum or a pouch of peritoneum. This is the pouch of the peritoneum. As the testes descend to its final destination in the scrotum, this pouch of peritoneum will remain nearby to the testicle and it will shut off from the original peritoneal cavity يعني راح تنقطع يعني بشكل بشكل طبيعي انه راح تنقطع عن البريتونيال كافيتي الاصلية فراح تسوي لنا هنا في كافيتي نسميها كافيتي اوف ذا تونيكا فاجيناليس ذيس ار ذا لايرز اوريجينال لاير ات كمز فروم اوريجينالي فروم ذا بريتونيوم فروم ذا بريتونيوم فوم uh, what we call the tonica vaginalis it have a parietal layer that is in direct contact with the skin of the scrotum and it have a visceral layer that cover the 
test this directly. This is called the remains of the, this is the remains of the processus vaginalis. This is the remains of the processus vaginalis, which is normally, it is closed. Normally, it is closed from the original peritoneal cavity. If this processus vaginalis remains open, it will lead to con what we call congenital anomalies. Yani congenital anomalies of the processus vaginalis. If it remains open, and there is a connection in between the original peritoneal cavity and the tonica vaginalis uh, cavity, if it remains persistent, and there is a connection, it will lead to uh, form, يعني, it will lead to collection of a fluid, peritoneal fluid in this cavity. And it will, it will lead to what is called congenital hydrocele. Hydrocele, it means collection of fluid. Congenital hydrocele. Or the congenital anomaly is just like a cyst. As in a small, a small cavity. A small cavity. It is called, uh, containing a fluid called insisted hydrocele of the cord. Insisted hydrocele of the cord. This is another congenital anomaly of the processes vaginis. Or... The opening is larger, the opening is larger, the, or the connection with the peritoneal cavity is larger that leads to the passage of loop of small intestine or bowel, what is called preformed hernial sac. It will lead to a formation of hernia for what we call the indirect inguinal hernia. Indirect inguinal hernia. And then, other congenital anomaly is uh, there is a connection with the original peritoneal cavity. Either there is a small connection that leads to collection of fluid and it's called congenital hydrocele. Or there is a formation of a small cyst that is proximally it's shut off. And distally also there is a shut off, but there is a collection of a small fluid in this cyst and it's called insisted hydrocele. Or there is a larger connection with the peritoneal cavity and leads to the passage of bowel of small intestine and this is called hernia and it's type of indirect inguinal hernia. Thank you.